Hi everybody. January 27, 2019, New York is celebrating. It's celebrating. Listen. Yay! Wow, wow, wow. What are they celebrating? The passing of the Reproductive Health Act. Ah, New York has made history on the anniversary of Roe v. Wade by passing a bill which Cuomo signs to allow women to have abortions right on up, full term abortions, making it very easy for them. And these women, yeah, light up the spire with pink. Yes, Governor Cuomo, wow, you are just magnificent. You, the Catholic, the Catholic Cuomo, the indefensible morality of Andrew Cuomo. All right. I need to interject and preface everything that I'm about to say with, I was that Democrat. I was that New Yorker, the Democrat, the liberal progressive. I marched on the mall in Washington, D.C., supporting abortion. I was that indoctrinated Democrat who believed that it was only those religious nutcases, those zealots who wanted to stop abortion, wanted to stop women, uh, wanted to prevent them from having a choice. All right, the insidious nature of beliefs. Where do beliefs come from? They come from your childhood. You're born into a family. That family has strong beliefs. You're surrounded by adults, some of whom are very influential in your childhood. You adopt their beliefs. You go through school and you develop these social networks very early on as kids and as teenagers and then young adults. You're set on a trajectory that is not necessarily your own. You adopt the beliefs of the social network that you travel in as you get older. The names and faces of that social network change, but the beliefs, the views, the opinions don't. It is a fact that the majority of adults have beliefs that never change. Their views and opinions never change. And they go through life in that same social network. Yes, names, faces change, but the beliefs and the views and the opinions don't. And they go throughout their entire life believing they are right and those who don't share their beliefs are wrong they live life in a bubble, in a bubble. Not understanding that the beliefs that they have are not theirs. They're the, the beliefs, the beliefs that they adopted from others as children. It is very rare that you find individuals that actually reevaluate their beliefs that try to understand where those beliefs come from. So, speaking for myself, the social network, Democrat, liberal, progressive, that I traveled in, yes, name, space has changed. And I grew up to be this young adult having beliefs that were not my own. Oh, I believed that they were my beliefs at the time. The fortunate thing in my case was that I grew up in a severely uh, pathologically narcissistic home. And the severity left all the individuals not having any beliefs in anything except 
a belief that they were fabulous. That was it. Nothing was talked about. Nothing was passed on. Nothing, not spirituality, not religion, not politics, nothing. It was all about getting what I want. And that was it. And what do I want? A lot of money. That was it. So I grew up to be an adult, not with cemented beliefs, but with very fragile beliefs. And because I was the stupid one in my family, all those in my social network were smarter than I was. And what they believed, well, they must be right. And my social network ended up being the college educated you know, they, uh, the liberal Democrat, they're the educated elite. They don't even know what elite really is, but they think they're the educated elite. So when I was in that social network, traveling in my bubble, never really taking a step outside for, you know, the first two decades of my adulthood, never taking a step outside to look and uh, to, to see what was happening within that social network. I was just too entrenched in it. So the beliefs that I had adopted from my social network, I, I, I guess subconsciously I thought, well, they're smart, so they must have checked it out. And what I believe then, what they believe, they must be right. And we're all supporting one another, reaffirming that we are right with our beliefs. And what was those beliefs? None of my social network ever really did any kind of research on what they believed. We were all doing the same thing. We all adopted these beliefs from someone else. We believe them to be our beliefs and we just went ahead, you know, patting each other on the back for our beliefs. We were right. Everybody else was wrong. Abortion, you're not killing a baby. It's not a baby. It's what? Well, we didn't even really talk about what it was. But I think in my head, I just thought it was just not a child, um, you know, maybe some sperm and egg and you're, you're aborting something before it becomes a developed human being. That's as far as you go. That's it. But this belief that it's men, men want to control your bodies. Oh boy, is that a strong belief. It has nothing to do with that. The choice aspect. You don't even think about what you are doing or the practice of abortion. You don't do any research, but you believe, well, you are a, a woman who it's your choice. It's your body. Well, in an ideal world where you have responsible adults that would work out uh, because if we had responsible adult women they wouldn't be having sex all over the place and having uh, getting pregnant and if we didn't live in this kind of moral um, decayed society then we wouldn't we wouldn't be facing what we're facing, but we do. Um, anyway, the I did reevaluate my beliefs. And when I came across information that was contrary to my beliefs, if it was a fact, you know, supported by evidence, it did change my mind. The un fortunate thing, the insidious thing about traveling in a bubble is that uh, 
most often, you never let anything penetrate that bubble. If you do, that's <clears throat> when you step outside. That's when you're led to reevaluate those beliefs. That happened to me. I did do the research and I was horrified. Horrified too. To get that, okay, you supported something that is quite evil. For as long as man has had religion, religion has had hypocrites. Governor Cuomo, Catholic. Now, I could hear my friends arguing. Well, Cuomo is great because he's signing bills that he doesn't himself believe in, but he's not subjecting New Yorkers to his beliefs. He's signing beliefs based on what New Yorkers want, and that is great. No, it is not, because you want moral, quote-unquote, leaders who actually live the principles they speak. Uh, when, you're, when you just speak principles and don't live them, you can act and, and behave in ways that are contrary to those principles quite easily which means you have no principles, which means you're just about speaking horseshit about yourself. It's a game, you know, this is who I am, but watch what I do. Watching what people do will give you the truth about who they are. So Cuomo, Catholic, signing this bill, something is very off there, a twisted view of morality does Cuomo have. Um, so this bill uh, on the anniversary of Roe v. Wade will allow abortions up to 24 weeks of pregnancy. And I'm going to show you what 24 weeks of pregnancy looks like. When, so the abortion, you can have a premature child delivered at 24 weeks and that child can live you know and grow up to be a human being but it also creates lenient exceptions essentially sanctioning um, sanctioning elective abortion up to the moment of birth what is this about i'll show you but first twitter is ablaze it's on fire Marlene Dunn, no one is aborting a baby on their due date. No one is doing that. 2% or fewer of abortions every year occur after five months. And this bill is really about when health of mother is in jeopardy. Stop overreacting. Marlene, stop being in, in, a useful idiot, indoctrinated your beliefs. Check them out. Reevaluate them. Look into abortion. Look into the abortion industry. How do you get people to do that? Mm, very, very hard. Late term abortion, it's only performed when the mother's health is at risk. This is what you want to believe because it supports your belief in abortion. These are the things that you want to believe. You know, our body, our choice. That's the fundamental message of the historic, long-awaited passage and signing of the Reproductive Health Act. So proud this day. You've been made fools of by an industry that is profiting. And profiting from not only the sale of fetal cells, but body parts. And the longer uh, period of gestation, the more money is made off of those body parts. Women, Marlene, or Marley, Marley, Anna, Sam, you know, Margaret. This is not about your rights. This is about a very 
evil practice. Now, if you know about Planned Parenthood, then you will know that Margaret Sanger, the founder, was a eugenicist. It was about originally killing those or stopping from being born those who were Negro, who were feeble-minded, the morons, the disabled. But this is Planned Parenthood today. Hello, I'm Cecile Hello. Richards, I'm Cecile president, Richards of president of Planned Parenthood Federation of America. Federation of America. I, want really I want to be really clear. clear. The, allegation the allegation that Planned Parenthood profits Parenthood in profits any way in from any tissue way. donation tissue is donation not is true. Not true. A liar. What would you expect for intact um, tissue? What what sort of compensation? What sort of? Well, why don't you start by telling me what you used to pay? Director's Council oh, good. meeting oh, good, um, good, in a couple of weeks, so I don't know if you'll be attending. I'm now the president of that organization. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Conversation. And Susan was a clinic. They're a startup that they have been about a year in business. They're a for profit company that's connecting researchers with people willing to donate tissue. Our volume, thank you for giving it to me, is 800 mm -hmm. a year. We're 60 in the second trimester. And we just started to talk about how the process worked with Novogenics down in um, Los Angeles when I was there. Okay. To back up a little bit, PPFA, our parent body, is on board with tissue donation, but we have to ask for a waiver to do it and we have to lay out for them what our program's going to be like. And the mechanics of it was that uh, Heather uh, Novogenics person would come to the site and our staff would sign the patients up and get consent and then Heather would look at the tissue and take what she, she mm -hmm. required. So it was logistically very easy for us. We didn't have to do anything. So it was compensation for this. We didn't have to do anything. So it was compensation for this. And the, there was a discussion as I was leaving. They, they had been paying by the case. And there was some discussion about doing it in a different way, or I don't know what we're used to doing, how we're used to doing compensation. The patients don't get anything. Okay, so I'd like, what, what, would, uh, what would you expect for intact um, tissue? What, what sort of compensation? What sort of... Well, why don't you start by telling me what you used to pay? Okay. I don't think so. I, I'd like to. I would like to know what would make you happy. What would work for you? Well, you know, in negotiations, a person who throws up the figure first is at a loss, right? So. <laughs> you, no, I, I don't look at it that way. I know you want to play that game. I get it, but no, no, no. I want low ball because I'm used to low things. You know what? Um, uh, if you low ball, I'll, I'll act pleasantly surprised and you'll know it's a low ball. Okay. Low ball. Okay. okay, here. Here, this woman, an executive at Planned Parenthood, is negotiating a sale of fetal tissue, tissue cells. There are more videos on Project Veritas's channel, Planned Parenthood Selling Body Parts. Okay, you women, you need to get, you are so used and manipulated, it is just like I was when I was your age. Used, manipulated into getting out on the streets, being the useful idiots of those who are incredibly evil, making so much money off of your aborted babies. And it's so sad to see this because you know that these minds are so gone, twisted, uh, and indoctrinated, none of them thinking for themselves, none of them doing the research to find out 
how incredibly evil is the abortion industry. So uh, the other uh, insidious part about an individual's thinking, you know, the confirmation bias, and I can hear my friends, if they saw this video, they'd say, oh my God, she's getting this article from Life Site. This is a pro-life site. And they would immediately dismiss all the information if they even listened to it. Instead, they would go to a website that would have articles that confirm their belief. That is not well thinking. That is a sick mind that needs healing. And the only way to heal is to recognize all of that which uh, triggers, flips the switch on, that confirmation bias switch on. And then when you're aware of it, you can say, no, let me see what is in this article. Let me hear it. And if I don't believe it, then I do my own independent res research to find out if what is in this article is factually true. But most people don't ever want to expend that kind of energy because, well, yeah, most are lazy. No matter how many degrees they have, no matter you know, the masters, the PhDs, the uh, doctorates in law or medicine, it doesn't matter. Confirmation bias operates in everybody and it allows us to just go on life in a bubble, believing that we are right, everybody else is wrong, and wow, it can really throw you onto a road that is very dark and evil. So, this article, The Dark Side of Biotech, Expert Details, Grizzly Fate of Fetal Body Parts. Um, yeah, every day in America, countless packages are carefully transferred for use by government, universities, pharmaceutical, and other biotechnology in, uh, laboratories. Uh, some uh, products that are developed, cosmetics, food, additives, or... Uh, forms of medical therapy, human body parts, eyes, ears, limbs, brain, skin, now an indispensable commodity for many U.S. researchers and scientists and a an lucrative export of Americans or America's um, abortion clinics. So this Dr. Teresa Dacher, a molecular and cellular physiologist and an internationally recognized expert in regenerative medicine spoke at a conference and spoke about the commoditization of unborn human beings in modern biotechnology. When man, this is what she said, when man wants to exploit other men, what we first have to do is alter our way of thinking about them and then, of course, we actually have to dehumanize them. And we usually do that by denying them a soul. So, therefore, they're not actually human like the rest of us. This, uh, Dreischer explained, is precisely the scenario with the smallest human lives in medical research today. And not just embryos, but unborn children of all trimesters whose body parts grow more valuable as they mature. What do you think that relationship might have to do with doctors encouraging abortions? She estimated, Dreischer estimates, that as many as 1.87 million such transactions go on every single year. Okay, think of this. You're a patient. You're full term. You're in New York. Suddenly you don't want that baby anymore. Your doctor encourages you, well, it's now legal. And you know what? I'm going to make it. I'm going to uh, give you the exception that you need 
to have that abortion. You think your doctor's great. Do you know if your doctor is not going to profit from that full ter term abortion? That has become very valuable because it's full term. This goes on and it's unfortunate you know, that women just think <laughs> these politicians signing into law their rights. Yay, we won. Now we have choice. And what you are, you've just been so manipulated down the dark road, the evil practice of abortion. You know, what, what many of the Democrat liberal progressives, they don't ever think about the child the unborn child. You know, we are indoctrinated to just not go there. You don't think about whether or not that abortion causes pain. And it does. If you did the research, you would learn how much pain is involved in the killing of that child. Doesn't matter if it happens to be a child in the womb or not. It's still a child. And I'm going to run this through. This is ultrasounds of each week of a pregnancy. <laughs>
life inside the womb. Now, uh, here, the best heart tissue is obtained from a child. 22 weeks gestation. Bodies of unborn children are being used as not only biomedical research tools, but as actual medical therapies. Fetuses 12, 14, 16, 18 weeks gestation are grounded up and their cells are implanted in people who have strokes, Parkinson's disease, cell lines, cell lines, fetal cell lines now put into vaccines, uh, the MMR, the chickenpox, hepatitis A. Um, and I didn't know this, but this doctor apparently sees a correlation between uh, countries that have allowed or introduced the fetal cell vaccine and autism. The spike, the rates going higher with autism. She sees that as being correlated with the introduction of fetal cell vaccine not just in the United States, but Canada, Great Britain, Wales, Denmark, Japan, Southeastern Asian countries. But uh, here, Desha blamed this commercialization in part on the growing tendency to see children as a choice rather than a blessing. Yeah, we need to get back to taking life very seriously instead of this narcissistic practice that we have going here in this country where I get to do whatever I want to do because it's my life and I get to kill and murder my baby and cause it tremendous amount of pain via abortion because it's my body. You know, it's uh, moral relativism. Wow, did that have a major impact on our society? the New Age uh, philosophies, the um, it's all about me, you know, baby boomers, you know, in my early 20s, there was this uh, saying, this mem, meme of uh, baby boomers, the one who dies with the most toys wins. Everything was about, hey, material, materialism, never spoke about anything of real import. And it was all about getting the money, getting a lot of things so that you could show off to everybody else that you're more successful than anyone else. It was so sick and twisted. But that's what it was about. So, what is this? Fees for services. Elective terminations. Gestation age, 13 to 24 weeks. Uh, and this, I believe, is for fetal tissue. Uh, you get $90 for fresh, $130 for frozen per specimen, 12 to 6 weeks. Price shoots up. 6 to 40 weeks. Price shoots up. Not so much. But 40 weeks, wow, spontaneous miscarriage, get away. Let, let's just let women abort at 40 weeks. Make it easy for them. Okay, I'll sign that into law for industry. And that's what it's about. So I will link below to this. It's uh, interesting, this uh, uh, Canadian-based organization. Does society know that Canadian researchers sir, sort, sorry, sort through aborted bodies obtained from local abortion sites and ship body parts, eyes, hearts, livers, cardiac blood to research facilities throughout the country? Does society know that Canadian researchers order body parts from thriving U.S. businesses which derive their product from 30 to 40 week aborted babies, especially taken from their mothers with great care to preserve their monetary value as specimens? Does society know that suppliers use partial birth abortion to deliver 
late-term specimens to research facilities. This grisly method of abortion is a way to obtain ideal research specimens. Information on U.S. suppliers is documented. Uh, does society know that there is no law? Only non-enforced guidelines concerning fetal tissue collection. There is a moratorium on research in Canada, which research facilities find a way to get around. But in the U.S., Bill Clinton, in one of his first acts as president, removed all such restrictions. Yes, our great leaders. Our great leaders. Hillary Clinton. Her hero? Margaret Sanger, who founded Planned Parenthood, a eugenicist. I'm going to read you some of this. And Hillary, there is a YouTube video with Hillary Clinton saying her hero is Margaret Sanger. Uh, Pelosi got a Margaret Sanger award, a Catholic, another Catholic, Pelosi, Nancy. These people uh, are so now, it's out in the open. These are evil, psychopathic, so narcissistic, beyond belief, that anyone can support these people. Once you know the truth about them, there's something very, very, your damaged goods, your mind is thoroughly sick and you need to heal it. But what Margaret Sanger believed, unlimited sexual gratification within, without the burden of unwanted children, important, birth control, birth control, but it was for killing uh, or preventing more Negroes and morons and disabled and what you stated the most merciful thing that a family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. We should hire three or four colored ministers, preferably with social service backgrounds and with engaging personalities. The most successful educational approach to the Negro is through a religious appeal. We don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. And the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea. If it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members, it's Margaret Sanger, 1939, this letter, and the original source was Sophia Smith Collection, Smith College, my alma mater, alma mater, my God. Wow. It's really hard to pull yourself from all of your participation in all of this evil going on. Sanger said, I think you must agree that the campaign for birth control is not merely of eugenic value, but is practically identical with the final aims of eugenics. Birth control propaganda is thus the entering wedge for the eugenic educator. But what I forgot to say was Sophia Smith and that's how you got Smith College, was uh, a, a supporter, along with Margaret Sanger. <laughs> As an advocate of birth control, I wish to point out that the unbalance between the birth rate of the unfit and the fit, admittedly the greatest present menace to civilization, can never be rectified by the inauguration of a cradle competition between these two classes. In this matter, the example of the inferior classes, the fertility of the feeble-minded, the mentally defective, the poverty-stricken classes should not be held up for emulation. On the contrary, the most urgent problem today is how to limit and discourage the over- fertility of the mentally and physically defective. Our failure to segregate morons 
who are increasing and multiplying demonstrates our full hearted and extravagant sentimentalism. We are paying for and even submitting to the dictates of an ever increasing unceasingly spawning class of human beings who never should have been born at all. Hillary Clinton's hero. Nancy Pelosi accepts a Margaret Sanger Award. Birth control must lead ultimately to a cleaner race. One fundamental fact alone, however, indicates the necessity of birth control if eugenics is to accomplish its purpose before eugenicists and others who are laboring for racial betterment can succeed, they must first clear the way for birth control. Like the advocates of birth control, the eugenicists, for instance, are seeking to assist the race toward the elimination of the unfit. And the government should give certain dysgenic groups those with bad genes in our population their choice of segregation or sterilization. Do you know how many states sterilized an awful lot of their residents and from uh, the 19, well let me say the 1930s and 40s on and many states still have laws permitting the sterilization of, well, really, the mentally handicapped. The third group of society are those irresponsible and reckless ones having little regard for the consequences of their acts or whose religious scruples prevent their exercising control over their numbers. Many of this group are diseased, feeble-minded, and are of the pauper element dependent upon the normal and fit members of society for their support. There is no doubt in the minds of all thinking people that the procreation of this group should be stopped. Okay, let me say this. And this was going on. I heard it in the 80s and it's been going on ever since. The pointing the finger at people who have had external forces destroy their circumstances. Instead of seeing the external forces that have led to their being fired, let go, companies downsizing, outsourcing, um, and they can't find a job that is similar um, the economy changing, bank fraud, suddenly people are losing their homes due to bank fraud, which our attorney general under uh, Obama said, we're not going to prosecute bank fraud because it would hurt the economy, so we're going to allow the criminals in banks to destroy Americans with their bank fraud. Um, all of this deliberately engineered to uh, destroy an awful lot of Americans, bring them down, destroy the middle class, and you know the loss of jobs, the economy, the outsourcing of jobs to other countries, um, and you know promises unfulfilled, pensions. Well, sorry. We don't have it for you, or it's going to be a lot less. There are so many different ways in which you end up having an awful lot of individuals in your society having no other choice but to rely on government food stamps or, um, you know, Medicaid, any kind of uh, subst subsidy that they can get. But then you have those Americans who haven't yet suffered the consequences. They then hate them and they think they're lazy and yeah there are an awful lot of lazy people who unfortunately they're born into families who have lived off 
you know, government checks. And they, having no frame of reference of any other kind of experience, end up, it becomes a generational thing. But that is part of the social engineering as well. But what we end up doing is hating the people who are dependent on government to survive, sustain their life. And then we end up having a Margaret Sanger view of life. Get rid of them. In passing, we should here recognize the difficulties presented by the idea of fit and unfit. Who is to decide this question? The grosser, the more obvious, the undeniably feeble-minded should indeed not only be discouraged, but prevented from propagating their kind. But among the writings of the representative eugenics, eugenicist, one cannot ignore the distinct middle-class bias that prevails. Birth control to create a race of thoroughbreds. Hordes of people born who live, yet who have done absolutely nothing to advance the race, one iota. Their lives are hopeless repetitions. Such human weeds clog up the path, drain up the energies and the resources of this little earth. She is the founder of Planned Parenthood. It is a for-profit organization. Now, she wanted to get rid of the Negro. Well, if you do a little bit of research on Planned Parenthood, where did Planned Parenthood clinics open up? The majority in black communities. And it still is the case today. So um, I will link below to everything. And it's really, I'm going to take this to the full hour. Uh, response to yeah, response tactile stimuli in, in, um, um, in cases in where there cases have been where interventions, there have been interventions uh, uh, medical, interventions medical interventions in the fetus. In the fetus. Um, um, well before 20 well weeks, before 20 there's, weeks a, there's a uh, physical, uh, behavioral, physical response, behavioral response, heart rate response, heart rate and response, and response, and response, and response uh, um, that we would come, that to, we would associate come to associate with pain. With now pain. the question, now of, the course question is, of course is, is that pain? Is that pain? There are a large, uh, a large thought, school of thought that says that pain, that says that pain is, is a psychological, psychological construct, construct that is dependent, is dependent on, on consciousness. consciousness. You know what? Okay. Uh, pain is psychological? Really? Well, I would say that, first of all, this is the full term baby inside the womb. If the mother feels pain, that child feels pain. And you cannot tell me that a child at 20 weeks, uh, 28 weeks, or then you go longer and longer into the gestation and you're seeing a child who is sucking his thumb or her thumb um, and yawning and opening the eyes. You have a fully formed human being. You cannot ever think that this child is not feeling the abortion because it is. And there is an awful lot of evidence that proves it's not psychological, okay? Do you think that infant once born is then going to feel pain, but inside the mother's womb, it just doesn't? That is insane. Now, pain, psychological? All right, well, if you think it's psychological, then um, turn on your electric stove. When the coils get red, put your hand down. And if you feel pain, oh, it's not physical. It's psychological. You must have a psychiatric disorder. Jesus. Yeah, I'm going to play this, the silent scream. I had it up on Kafka Winston World. This was the video that I saw years and years and years ago, that really changed my view of abortion. Now, now let's turn to let's the turn. By the way, let me just say that in the beginning, 
this is not a res religious zealot. This is a doctor who is talking about his experience as a medical student. And, well, as a medical student, they're not taught what happens during an abortion. You find that out if you are someone who is mature and has a little bit of wisdom. As a doctor, you should be researching everything that you are doing to your patients, including the medications that you prescribe, not relying on the pharmaceutical reps who make money from selling you medication, and not relying on others. We have been now proven, proven that Americans are about money. When they're about money, that means they're on the road to commit a lot of evil. And I don't say evil uh, as a, uh, you know, a religious term. The only belief I have is in truth. I don't have any other beliefs anymore today, just in truth. I believe truth can heal. Relationships can heal. Families can heal a society. But when you have just ignored truth and you've got a society filled with people who can lie and have no problem doing it, lie about themselves, claiming that they live the principles that they speak, but all you have to do is observe them and you see they ain't living any of the principles that they speak, then you've got a society filled with an awful lot of people who are supporting, supporting, living an immoral uh, life based on pretense, based on lies, based on fabrications. And when you have a society with one generation growing up with a meme that says, hey, the one who uh, dies with the most toys wins, and that generation doesn't heal their own psyche, then that generation produces the next generation. And that psyche unhealed is the parent of the new generation. And you just get sicker and sicker and sicker as you go along. So, um, I will say that any children in the room where you're watching this, uh, you might want to um, move out of that room to watch it or have them move out because some of this is pretty graphic and it's hard. It's just hard. It was hard for me. Actual film. Actual so. film. So we are now looking. We are now looking at a sector, at a scan, sector scan of a real-time real ultrasound, ultrasound image of a 12-week unborn child. Unborn child. The child is, child orientated, is orientated in this direction. In this direction. You are looking now are looking at the now head, at of the the child, head of the child here, here. the body, the of, the body child, of the child here, here. and this, and uh, this image uh, is image the child's, is the hand, child's hand, hand approaching its, approaching mouth. its mouth. Looking a little more looking closely, a little more closely child, child, we can discern, we can discern the, eye, the eye or the orbit, or of, the orbit eye, of the eye here, here. The nose, the nose of the child, of the here, child here, the mouth of the, the, mouth child, of the here, child here, and we can even, we look, can even at look at the ventricle, the ventricle of, the brain of the brain here. here. This is a fluid-filled fluid space, space in the brain. In the brain. We see the body, see of, the the body child of the here child with here, the ribs, with the in, ribs silhouette, in silhouette and the spine, and the of, the spine of the child at the back. At the back. This, this rather granular, rather granular area, area of tissue, of tissue at, the top of at the top of the sector appears to be, appears the, placenta to be the placenta or afterbirth, or afterbirth of, the child. of the child. And we can begin and we to can see, begin down, to see here down here the, the thighs, thighs, the lower extremities, the lower of, the extremities of the child coming off, coming the, body off the body in this manner. In this manner. Now, now, let's move to the let's action. Move to the action. We now see we now the heart see beating, the heart beating here, in the here in the child's chest. chest. The heart is beating the heart at a rate of approximately, approximately 140, 140 a minute. 40 a minute. 
Uh, and we can uh, see, the, we child can see the child moving rather, moving serenely, rather serenely in the, in the uterus. uterus. We can see it when shifting its position from time to time. time, to time. It, is it is still oriented in this manner. In this manner. Uh, and uh, the, and mouth the mouth is receiving, is receiving the, thumb the thumb of the child. Of the, child. Uh, the child again, the child again uh, is, moving uh, is moving quietly in its sanctuary. In its sanctuary. Now, now, this shadow, this shadow which, we are seeing, which we are seeing down at the, down bottom, at of the, the bottom of the screen is the is suction, the suction tip. tip. We have colored we have the, the suction tip, tip deliberately, deliberately in order for you order to discern, for you discern more, clearly. more clearly. But the abortionist, but the abortionist has now has dilated the cervix and is now now and is now inserting this suction, this tip, suction which tip, which you can see which you moving, can see moving back, and forth, back and forth across the screen, across the screen. you will note you will that, note as, the that as the tip, suction tip, which is now, which over, is now here, over here, moves toward, moves the, child. toward the child. The child will the child rear, will away, rear from away from it and undergo, and undergo much more much violent, violent, much more agitated much more movements. Agitated the child is now child moving in a much more purposeful manner. Its orientation changes from time to time. It is rearing Again, here. again here. Now the suction now, the tip, suction has, tip not has not actually touched, actually the, touched child, the child, even though the child though is, the child extremely is agitated extremely agitated and moving in a violent manner. Man. The child is now the moved, child back, is now to moved to back to the profile, the profile view. view, and the and suction the tip suction is flashing tip is once flashing again across, across, the the across the screen. The child's mouth, the child's mouth is now open, and we will see that again in the freeze frame in a moment. But this suction tip, which you can see moving violently back and forth, on the, on the bottom of the screen is the, is the lethal, the lethal instrument, instrument which will ultimately, which will ultimately tear, apart tear apart and destroy, and destroy, the, destroy child. the child. It is only it after is only the fluid, after has, the been fluid has been broken, the sac, the sac has been disrupted, been disrupted that the tip that will the tip actually will come, actually against, come the child. against the child. We can see we the can tip see moving, the tip back, moving and forth back and forth as the abortionist, as the abortionist seeks, seeks the child's body. The child's body. Once again, Once we again, see the child's see the mouth child's wide mouth open wide in a open silent in a scream in this particular, in this particular freeze, frame. freeze frame. This is, this is the silent, silent scream, scream of a child, of a child threatened, threatened imminently, imminently with, extinction. with extinction. There are more graphic videos regarding abortion and what happens to these children. Decide they want Decide to dispose, want to dispose of, an of an inconvenience, an unwanted, an unwanted pregnancy, pregnancy, an unwanted life. An unwanted life. Then the so-called so humans start humans acting like start carnivorous, acting like animals, carnivorous animals, animals and tearing, and tearing little, little bodies, bodies to shreds. To shreds. And if you doubt my words, doubt my word, Monica, would you, Monica please would you please share from this chair? Well, point. we uh, well, we uh, have here have today here in the studio, studio actual, actual victims, victims of abortion. Of abortion. Um, they, um, are they are here displayed in here front. in front. If I can, I can uh, move myself, a little, move myself a little bit. To, to just, you can just sit right there. Just sit right there. Okay. Okay. Um, um, to uncover, to uncover what, we have, what here, we have here, even in the hot lights. In the hot uh, lights uh, these are these are four four of the of the. Victims of, victims of abortion and here and here we can you can, can get a close-up get a close-up view view of this of this we're talking about we're talking about here's a hand here's a hand there we go we can there see it very clearly a beautiful a beautiful this is this, this is, hand this hand here here you can see the uh, fingernails, see the, uh, fingernails so, clearly. so clearly there's another hand there's here another hand here right here right here um, um, you can turn that to turn see. see. They're beautiful, beautiful beautifully, beautifully formed. formed. This, uh, this fetal, uh, child fetal child is approximately, is approximately 18, 18 weeks, weeks before, and, before half months, and half months gestational, gestational age. age. This, here you this see the shoulder, see torn, the shoulder apart, torn apart, torn right from, torn the, right uh, from shoulder. the shoulder. There you are, you there see you that are, very clearly. Very clearly. This, uh, this uh, probably was probably a D&E &E, uh, abortion. Uh, abortion. You can see here, you can see here the, uh, the, the, foot uh, the foot of this child. Of this, child. this is a human this being. Is a human this, was a, this, this is a foot, this is a foot of, a, of, a baby. Of, a, of a baby. Okay, uh, this was decades ago, This, these videos. And 
if you watch this if you watch this well I'll play it now the heart rate, now the heart rate has speeded has up speeded dramatically, up dramatically. The child's the movements, child's are, movements violent are violent at this point, at this point. It does it sense, does sense aggression, aggression in its sanctuary. In its sanctuary. It, is it is moving away. Moving away. One can see one it can see moving it to the moving left, to the side, left of the uterus side of the uterus in an attempt, in an attempt a pathetic a attempt, pathetic to, attempt escape to escape the inexorable, the inexorable instruments, instruments which the abortionist, which the abortionist is, using is using to extinguish, to extinguish its, life. its life. Now the now heart, the heart has, again, has perceptibly again perceptibly speeded up. Speeded we can time can this time at approximately 200, 200 beats, per minute. beats per minute. And there is no question no that this question child, this child senses, senses the most mortal, the most danger, mortal danger, danger imaginable. imaginable. The, membrane the membrane has now has been punctured, been punctured and, the and the fluid has escaped. Has escaped. One no longer One no sees, longer that, sees that, that large reservoir, reservoir of fluid. Of Fluid surrounding, the, surrounding child. the child. But once but the fluid, once has, the fluid been has been drained off, drained off the suction the tip suction has now tip been has firmly clamped to the child's to the body, child's and, body. The child and the child is being pulled in a downward, in a downward direction. direction by the abortionist's, by the abortionist's suction, tip suction tip with the negative with pressure, pressure applied, applied to it. To it. And the body and is the body now is being torn, torn systematically, systematically from, the head. from the head. The head of the child, of the child being, being in this direction, direction here, here. here. now outlining the, the child's, child's head. head. The lower extremities, the lower extremities have, already have already been lost. Been lost. And we see the and suction see tip the flashing tip from flashing time to time, time in the screen, in the screen as a as typhoon-like a typhoon -like series, of echoes. series of echoes, and, and the child, the is, child being is being tugged back, back and forth as the, as suction, the tip suction tip has now been has applied, now been applied, to, the applied body, to the body, and the abortionist, and the abortionist is exerting, is exerting his, traction his traction on the child on the in this manner. The child's head is still discernible here. Here. The body, the is, body no is no longer discerned. It has now it been has torn, now from, been the torn head. from the head. What we see what now we see is now the head is itself, the head with what is called what the midline mid echo, echo of the head, and the spicules, and the spicules or, fragments or fragments of bone. Of bone. Now, this head, now this head, which I'm outlining, which I'm outlining, here, outlining here, on this 12-week child, child is simply is too large, large to, be pulled to be pulled in one piece, one piece out, out of the uterus. The abortionist, the abortionist is going to have, going to, have to, employ to employ this instrument, this instrument the polyp the forcep, forcep, in an attempt, in an attempt to, grab, to the grab the head. The abortionist, the abortionist will attempt, will attempt to, crush to crush the head, the head with, this instrument, with this instrument in this manner, in this manner and remove, and the, remove head the head piecemeal. piecemeal from the from uterus. The, uterus. The, the abortionist, abortionist and, the and the anesthesiologist have a secret, have a language, secret language between them, between them which, shields which shields them from the them grisly, from reality grisly reality of what is going, of what is going on. on. The abortionist, the abortionist and the anesthesiologist, and the anesthesiologist together, together refer, refer to the to head, of, to this the head child, of this child, which is now being, is sought, now being sought as number as one. Number one. And the anesthesiologist, the anesthesiologist will, will inquire of the abortionist, of the abortionist is number is one, number out, one yet? out yet? Are we finished? Are we finished? Yes. Reduce everybody to numbers. You dehumanize them. And then you can do an awful lot of evil. But he goes on talking about how abortion is an industry and how many abortions we've had prior to and then after Roe v. Wade and wow they shot up I think this current was in 83 so we're talking three decades ago was this video 1,500,000 abortions in 83 how many do you think we're aborting today especially since it is a whopping industry of an awful lot of profit and when you see an aborted child yeah you do if you are of a sound mind even though you may be indoctrinated and you know have all of those beliefs and everything but when you look at these pictures when you learn the truth if your mind is capable of reaching any kind of health 
uh, sanity soundness, it will change. Even just looking at these pictures. Now, as you know, a young adult, yeah, Marley, Carol, I was right there. But I didn't know. I didn't know. I thought I was on the right side. I was on the wrong side, supporting something, not understanding the foundations of Planned Parenthood, abortion, uh, the Margaret Sanger eugenicist, uh, eugenics depopulation. I didn't understand. So it made me a useful idiot. Well, when you actually do get to the point where you recognize uh, the truth about your own self and how you have been, you know, manipulated or uh, because your own thinking was shoddy um, when you're young and you're not, you know, stepping outside your own social network, uh, you know, you're just living inside that bubble and preventing anything from puncturing that bubble because you think you're so right and everybody else is so wrong. Oh, that makes you a tool of those who are really evil. And unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of people in the world who are not evil, but they commit evil all the time because of their faulty thinking with false beliefs, Marley, you need to do some reevaluating. Stop overreacting. Do you know how many babies are being aborted at 30 weeks, 32, 34, 36 weeks? Do you know that it is a very profitable thing to get a woman to abort later on in their pregnancy. This has to be factored in to all of you who are out on the streets demanding your choice. You've got to factor in this information. Your choice, but it's your baby. And that is a soul that while you carry it inside your womb, I'm sorry, you do not have the right, though you can exercise it. You do not have the moral right to kill that individual. My views on abortion obviously have changed quite a bit. And while I know where I don't stand, I'm not entirely sure where I do stand. I don't want to go to making abortion illegal. Uh, I guess that if I had to just think off the top of, you know, my mind right now, I'd say that nothing after maybe week four. I know that I'm going to get a lot of flack for that. I haven't really thought it out. Um, we're so far beyond ever getting to that place again. In fact, we're moving in the opposite direction. But you cannot deny, you cannot deny that week 32, week 26, Week 24, week 20, week 19. You cannot deny that you have life in there. And as all life, well, it does deserve to exist. The problem that I had with a lot of people who were adamantly against abortion was you care so much about the unborn 
But once born, you don't care about that life and what happens to it. I didn't like the split between the unborn and the born. And many children are born um, into families that they then get to live an awful lot of abuse and neglect. You couldn't get, and I'll talk about the religious um, folks out there that were pro-life and they were, you know, protesting the abortion clinics. And this was decades ago. Um, for me, this was my experience. I would get angry because I could see them only caring about the unborn. I couldn't see them caring about the born. And yes, it pissed me off. But you can't deny that you are killing your child who is not just the thing. While you may be able to dehumanize your own child in that womb, it's not the truth. You're just doing it to allow yourself the freedom to kill that child and not have to suffer any of the consequences of the emotional pain, though a lot of women who have an abortion, after that abortion, it is not a simple thing to accept. So anyway, I will link below to everything. If you got this far, I appreciate you listening. This is, uh, this was a hard one for me to face. So, yeah, reevaluating beliefs is very, 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 very important because if you haven't, then they're not your beliefs. They are beliefs that you've adopted from other people, believing that they're your beliefs. And those beliefs are really, you know, they're shaky. They're easily, you know, um, it's easy for you to just, you know, behave contrary to the belief because it's not yours until you do that work to reevaluate those beliefs and adopt beliefs deliberately then you begin to live it then you be begin to live the the actual principles of the belief most people don't do that so that's why we have a society filled with people like Cuomo and people who actually applaud Cuomo. Hey, great governor. No. No. Grossly immoral. Who can do anything contrary to those principles that he speaks. But that's what Americans are. On the whole. Not all, but on the whole. It's hard to face that you were once one of them. But if you can't face that, you will always be one of them. All links are below.